Hello YouTube, it's Barbara Jean. Again, it's really early in the morning. Not as early as yesterday, or the, the last time I made my video, but still pretty early. Um, but anyway, I had uh, some more thoughts about Hanukkah and um, that I think I needed to get out. Um, I was thinking about... Um, I'll actually just go to the scriptures first. Uh, John 10. Let's go to John 10 first. And in my last video, I was showing you how when Jesus was walking in the temple, the, the porch of Solomon, how it matched what happened to him matches the Church of Philadelphia. I think I made it pretty clear. I think it's an incredible prophetic analogy of the Church of Philadelphia and what he was saying to the to the church here in John 10 when he was walking in, when he was confronted by the synagogue of Satan and, um, and how he was talking about he's the door. Uh, John 10, 9, I am the door. By me, if any man enter, he shall be saved and go up and shall go in and out and find pasture. Um, we talk about in Church of Philadelphia, he talks about how he's the door or that there's an open door. Um, talks about the synagogue of Satan, about those who, the thief who comes to steal, kill and destroy uh, the sheep, um, in, that, that there are the hirelings, that these um, people, these people who were put over the rule and charge of the sheep to look after them um, had some very bad intentions and didn't do their job and in fact were killing, stealing and destroying God's sheep. Um, but how he is the good shepherd. Um, it also talks about um, talks about how he and his father were in one. This is where I want to get to John 10, 22. And it was at Jerusalem, the Feast of Dedication, and it was winter. And Jesus walked in the, in the temple of Solomon's porch. Now, we are we are God's temple. Um, I talked about how the menorah, which is a seven-branch candlestick, which Jesus is standing in front of in the book of Revelation, chapter 1. Um, but there's two added candlesticks on, that are added um, on in Revelation, chapter 11, when it talks about the two witnesses. That makes nine candlesticks. What festival is of the nine candlesticks? Well, that would be... Hanukkah. And what is Hanukkah about? It's about the rededication of the temple. It's about cleansing the temple, about a, a group of a small group of people who cleansed the land and cleansed the temple of the synagogue of Satan, of those who um, had desecrated the temple. And God had brought in or had, had raised up the small group of people, a small band of people in Israel to, to cleanse the temple, to cleanse the land of these uh, idolaters. And to rededicate the temple. Um, we are going through right that right now. We are going through the cleansing of our temples. The temple of our mind. The temple, the brain that stands between your two temples. It's not a coincidence that this is called your temple. I talked about the, uh, the pillars that were in Solomon's porch. That Solomon built that were encrusted with. Um, uh, statue, I mean, um, carvings of pomegranates. Pomegranates are red like rubies, and when you break them open, they are there's hundreds of little uh, seeds uh, and um, surrounded with fruit, fruit and seed, fruit that looks like little one carat rubies. What is about what is the 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 um, church of what is the what does God say about rubies? He talks about rubies being wisdom. He talks about we were well, these. These pillars are crowned with, with, with pomegranates or basically rubies. That that is a sign of wisdom. And who can find a bride in the book of Proverbs? It talks who's going to find a, a good wife. She is more highly prized than rubies. Rubies being the most expensive gemstone. These are not coincidences. This is amazing stuff. So. <laughs> I'm going, this is amazing. So when you read about him being in Solomon's temple, he is surrounded in the temple by the synagogue of Satan. They 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 gang up on him. And they 
force him because there's no forcing Jesus. It was the right time for him to make a declaration. They were demanding of him to make a declaration. And he was in the right place at the right time. And so were they. And they were demanding of him to make a declaration about his identity, which he does. He says, my father and I are one. And he also talks about the people who were going to follow him. Um, um, he said, tell us plainly. Um, if thou be the Christ, Christ, tell us plainly. And Jesus answered them, I told you, and you believe not the works that I do in my Father's name. They bear witness of me, but you believe me not, because ye are not of my sheep, as I said unto you. My sheep hear my voice. The church of Philadelphia hears the voice of the Lord. It says that we um, cling to his word. Uh, let me just see if I can find it quickly for you. This is just amazing to me. I hadn't, didn't even see all this until the other day when I started reading it. I couldn't believe how much it actually matches. Um, I know that it works. Behold, I have set before thee an open door, and no man can shut it. For thou hast a little strength, and has kept my word, and has not denied my name. This is what he says to them. Um, going back to John 10 talks about how we hear his voice. We are listening to his voice. We hear him. He's the one we listen to. We're not listening to man. We're not involved with the synagogue of Satan. We're not interested in what they have to say. We are listening to Christ and Christ alone. Um, it talks about how um, no one shall pluck him from my father's hand. The church of Philadelphia is told that there's an open door. And no man can shut it. No man can take away your salvation. No man can steal from you what God has given to you freely. And no man. And it says that the same thing it says here. Uh, I will, I will, I give them unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish. Neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. No man can shut the door. Um, my Father, which gave them, is great. Gave them me is greater than all, and no man is able to pluck them out of my Father's hand. I and my Father are one. Now this is interesting. It says, and the Jews took up stones again to stone him. So this is not the first time they wanted to stone Jesus. Actually, when Jesus was in an, another tabernacle, I think it was in his hometown, they attempted to to stone him there too. When he made a declaration that he was fulfilling the prophecies of um that were set down by their you know the forefathers the prophets and he made a declaration there and also in the synagogue and they attempted to stone him then too and it says here they took up stones again to stone him and jesus answered many good works have i shown you from my father for which of these works those works do you stone me and jesus answered saying for a good work we stone you not, but for blasphemy, and because thou, being a man, makest thyself God. And Jesus answered, Is it not written in your law, I said, you are gods? Now this is also interesting, because in the Church of Philadelphia, what's happening? He says, I will write upon you the name of my Father, the name of my the, the New Jerusalem, which I believe is the name of the Holy Spirit, and his new name. We have these three names written on, on us. It also says that he will make the synagogue of Satan come and worship at your feet. Only God is worship, people. But God also says that we shall see him as he is and we shall be like him. We will be lifted up. Jesus cannot be unequally yoked. He will make us not God, don't get me wrong, please don't go there. He's, we're not going to be God, we're going to be God's. He is going to lift us up into the same position that he himself is in, in order for us to be equally yoked with him. Just like that, in the beginning with Adam and Eve, there is something inside of us that wants to be equally yoked to God. It is because we were created in the image and likeness of God. And it was a promise, I believe, in our spirit that says one day we will be like him. But they failed the test in the garden. And now all those who listen to Christ, Christ Jesus and do what he tells them to do and are obedient to him, they will be given that position that was denied them in the garden, denied humanity in the garden. We have to, we're going through a testing time. We're going through a trial time, whether we are worthy to be equally yoked with Christ. And if you are an unworthy and if you are unwilling to, to do what Christ says and listen to his word and do what he tells you to do, you are not worthy to be lifted up. There are many people in this world who want to be like God, who think they are God, G, big G God. 
but they're unwilling to do what God tells them to do. They are trying to lift themselves up with by their own bootstraps and their own idolatry and their own self-worship. Instead of worshiping God, they're worshiping themselves or they're worshiping Satan. But here it says, he says, is it not written in your law? I said, you are gods. This is Christ's words here, people. This is the word of God. He, if he called them gods unto whom the word of God came and the scriptures cannot be broken, say ye of him whom the father hath sanctified and sent to the world, thou blasphemest, because I said, I am the son of God. He says, he basically is saying, I'm not a liar here. The father and I are one. And you will be also like me. If you listen to my voice, if you worship the Father, if you give up your idolatry, you will be like me. I will raise you up to that position so we will be equally yoked. It's not blasphemy. And yet, this is what they, they accused him of and they wanted to stone him for. It. If I do not want the Father's uh, work, the works of my Father, believe me not. But if I do, though you believe me, believe not me, believe my works. Believe the works that you may know and believe that the Father is in me and I in him. Therefore they sought him again to take him, but he escaped out of their hands. That's what I wanted to get you. And it's interesting, after he does this, after this happens, what happens? He went away again beyond Jordan to the place where John at first baptized, and there he abode. So he lived, He, after this happened, he escaped their hands miraculously. He must have just disappeared out of their midst, or they were blinded and they couldn't see him. And he walked through the midst of them, and he went back to where he was first baptized where he was baptized by John, the river. That's where he went back to live. It's an interesting passage. And and I'm thinking, okay, this is even, I, I didn't get to this part in the last video, but I think I'm going to go there now, is that they tried to stone him and they couldn't do it. They didn't have the legal right to do it. And he passed through them somehow. Like I said, he either disappeared out of their midst or they were blinded and they couldn't see him, but he passed through them. And he escaped their, um, um, he escaped them from, um, they didn't have the legal right to stone him, which I think is really interesting. And again, when you look at the Church of Philadelphia, what does it say about the Church of Philadelphia? Revelation chapter 3 talks about the synagogue of Satan, how they will come and worship at our feet. Um, and that he says, I love you. Behold, I will make them of the synagogue of Satan, which say they are Jews and are not, but do lie. These are liars. Behold, these are the ones who are blaspheming. These are the liars. These are the ones who are lying about God and lying about against his people and lying about Christ. But do lie. Behold, I will make them come and worship before thy feet. Remember what I said about feet? Feet represent the gospel, the gospel of Christ. Feet represent the good news that is that is preached. And to know that I have loved thee, because thou hast kept the word of my patience, I will also keep thee from the hour of temptation or trial, which is, shall come upon all the world to try them that dwell upon the earth. Behold, I come quickly, hold fast, which thou hast, that no man take thy crown. We are crowned around our temples with rubies. We are the bride. We are the temple. Um... It says further, him that overcometh will I make a pillar in the temple of my God, and he shall go, go no more out, and I will write upon him the name of, this, of my God, and the name of the city of my God, which is New Jerusalem, which comes down out of heaven from my God, and I will write upon him my new name. So no man can number this, this group of people because they are named by God. There's a relationship with God. There's no numbering them. You can't number them. You can't put a number on this group of people because they are in a relationship with God. They have the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The Trinity, the three in one, are written on us. And there is no way, any, no man can pluck us from God's hands or the hands of Jesus Christ. We are, we are without number because we're in a relationship. Our relationship is what makes us different from all the other churches with God. Okay, now, I want to go back to what it says here. 
uh, I will keep thee from the hour of temptation which shall come upon all the world to try them that dwell upon the earth. Now we've already been tried. We've already made that decision to follow Christ Jesus. We are put been put, put through the fire to be um, uh, cleansed of all our unrighteousness, to clean, cleanse our temples. Okay? Now, what's interesting here, it says, I will keep you from the hour of temptation, this hour that's going to come upon the world, to try them. Interesting what happened. Now, go back to John 10. What happened? They picked up stones to stone him when he said he and his father are one. Here he here in the Church of Philadelphia, because of our relationship with Christ, we are now one with God because of our relationship, because of um, our baptism, because of our belief, because we have walked with Christ. We believed his word. We've gone through the door. We're in that door that no man can shut on us. And, he, and, and what happens to the Church of Philadelphia or when the rapture occurs? Those who have a relationship with Christ are taken. Those who don't know him won't put any oil in their lamps. But the one who, ones who go with Christ are the ones who know him. And what does he say to those who the door is shut on? They're, they're knocking at the door where there's weeping and gnashing of teeth. And he's saying, I don't know you. We don't have a relationship. We're not in a relationship here. I don't know you. If they had known Christ, they would have been prepared. They would have done what he told them to do. They would have listened to his voice rather than the voice of man. That includes their their pastors, their teachers, their their uh, bishops, their whomever. If they're listening to their voice rather than the voice of Christ Jesus, then they're not in full relationship with Christ, and Christ doesn't know them. They these people are in relationship to their their governors and their prime ministers and their and their pastors and their teachers, but they're not in relationship with Christ, and Christ rejects them and shuts the door on them. Because he doesn't know them. They don't have a relationship. Here it is that Christ is telling this group of people who is called the Church of Philadelphia, which means brotherhood, the Church of Brotherhood, those in a relationship. It's the only church that has this particular name to it. It is a name, it's a, it's a relational name that is a relation. We are in relation to God. Now, what's, so he says, in John 10, my father and I are one. No one can pluck the ones that are, who are following me, who listen to me from my, my hand or my father's hand. It's the same thing it says here. Now, I wanted to go back. It says, I will keep you from the hour of trial. I will be removing. I, I, actually, the word is ek. I believe it's A-A-E-K. I will remove. It means to snatch, to, to quickly snatch something out from harm's way. Um, I discovered that many, many years ago when I got around and like I said, I'm a, I'm a trendsetter, people. I'm just a trendsetter. <laughs> I hate to say that about myself, but it's just the truth. So anyway, when I discovered that many, many years ago, when I first started to um, study Revelation, and I looked up, they said, well, the, the, the rapture's not in the book of Revelation. Well, they're wrong in so many accounts. But this is where I first found it, was in uh, when it talks about, I will remove you from the hour of tribulation. Um, and that is in... Uh, of course, let's go back to Revelation 3.10. I will keep you, which is, like I said, I'm going to find out, get the right word here. Revelation 3.10. I shall... Mm, where is it here? I will keep thee. I will... Um, to guard, to keep, Uh, where is it now? Uh, this is not what I was thinking. Military, it talks about a military fortress. Logos, mm -hmm. uh -huh. or not it either. Here it is, ek, from a primary, it's ek or ex, um, a primary preposition denoting origin, the point whence the motion, blah, 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 whence uh, 
from out to remove to snatch out out among over um, anyway I think I'll, that's enough of that but anyway this whole passage when I first realized that's where the snap that's where the snatch is that's where the rapture of the church is was talking to about the Church of Philadelphia how he will remove them from the hour of tribulation now again going back to Solomon's porch Jesus and, and John 10 he's walking in the Solomon's porch when all this is happening and that during the feast of Hanukkah which is the feast of lights it's the festival of oil it's the festival of when you look at the ten virgins some had oil some had not it's the festival of light they lit their lamps they woke up from their sleep it's the great awakening <laughs> the doors are open and doors are shut it, it all is it's an amazing analogy here and I'm thinking okay from the hour of tribulation what's the hour of tribulation they, they were gonna be removed well they tried to stone Jesus they picked up stones to stone Jesus but they didn't have the legal right to do it okay it's all about the stoning here now this is where I'm going so they tried to stone him but they didn't have the legal right to do it so Jesus disappeared out of their midst suddenly he was there and next he was gone think about this they will keep you from the hour of temptation Revelation uh, 3 the Church of Philadelphia what's gonna happen what happens well of course there is um, the, re the revelation um, the church the sixth seal talks about how this great wrath is kind of fall is coming upon the earth but who is removed before it happens oh that would be the church um, in Revelation chapter 7 you see the raptured church in Revelation chapter 7 and then in Revelation chapter 8 you see what do you see happening you see the house of prayer or the tabernacle being opened you see them first of all in Revelation chapter 7 they're in the tabernacle they're in the temple and they're offering prayer which Jesus says in Revelation John 10 that my house is a house of prayer oh no no I'm sorry when he cleansed the temple he said my house is a house of prayer and what happens in Revelation chapter 8 after the rapture of the church the prayers are released to God all the prayers of the saints that have been held back held back for what for God's wrath and all the things that the synagogue of Satan has done against the church is released on the earth because the prayers that have been held back for this time are released in the tabernacle in heaven in the temple then what happens great hailstones fire and brimstone fall on the earth and a third part of the earth is burnt up stones fall to the ground fiery stones this is the uh, great um, destruction of the earth you know the first time Jesus said God said he would not destroy the earth the second time with water that was after the um, Noah's flood when Mo uh, Noah and his family were saved they were lifted up in the boat you know they were lifted up in the boat all of them and God promised with the rainbow that he would no longer destroy the earth with water the whole world but would there would come a time when he would destroy the earth with fire this is that time because when Christ comes back to the earth for his thousand year reign he doesn't destroy the earth with fire that's already happened when he comes back with the Saints to to uh, to destroy the armies that surround Israel in, in um, the thousand uh, before the thousand year reign so that is this is the time this is when this great destruction from the heavenlies comes down and what's happening stones are falling this goes back to what happened the synagogue of Satan tried to stone Jesus for blasphemy Jesus, Jesus disappears because they don't have legal right to do it so what happens in the Church of Philadelphia the church is the synagogue of Satan is surrounding us thinking that they have the right to kill us to to stone us to, to destroy us but they don't have the legal right to and what's going to happen Jesus is going to remove us we will suddenly disappear from their midst and God the wrath of God will be released now think about this just to prove my point let's go back I've mentioned in my last video Sodom and Gomorrah what happened there they removed Lot and his family 
He told them not to look back. Unfortunately, Lot's wife did, and she turned into a pillar of salt. But God first removed Lot and his family. Before what happened, great hailstones of fire and brimstone came down and destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah and the supposed five cities that surrounded the Dead Sea. Okay? Now, think about this. Daniel. What happened in Daniel? Let's just go. I don't want to read the, that passage from Daniel about Nebuchadnezzar's dream. Daniel 2. Let's go to Daniel 2. Nebuchadnezzar, the Babylonian king, has a dream. The spirit of Babylon. He is the king of Babylon. And he says, um, he has this dream, and Daniel interprets the dream, and he tells them what it means. Let's see if I can find it here. Not only does he interpret the dream, I believe he also tells them what it, what the dream was when, and uh, the Nebuchadnezzar didn't even tell him what the dream was. And I think he, I think that's why he does this. It says, um, I want to. I'm going to skip down to a point, to a place, not the whole the whole dream. I just want to get to the part where he talks about um, what he saw, how the destruction of the uh, the last kingdom that was going to rise up against the people, uh, God's people. Um, Daniel interprets the dream. Daniel uh, 2.31 Thou, O king, sawest, and behold, a great image. This great image, whose brightness was excellent, stood before thee, and the form thereof was terrible. This image head was of uh, fine gold, his breast and arms of silver, his belly and his thighs of brass, his legs of iron, his feet part of iron and part of clay. Thou sawest till a stone was cut out without hands, a stone was cut out without hands, which smote the image upon his feet that were of iron and clay and break them into pieces. Then the iron and the clay and the brass and the silver and the gold broke into pieces together that became like the chaff of the summer threshing floors. And the wind carried them away and no place was found for them. And the stone that smote the image became a great mountain and filled the whole earth. And then let's go down to the interpretation. I just want to go down to the last part, Daniel 2.41. And whereas thou saw the feet and toes part of potter's clay and part of iron, the kingdom shall be divided, but there shall be in the strength in it the strength of the iron, for as much thou sawest the iron mixed with miry clay. And as the toes and the feet were part of iron and part of clay, and so the kingdom shall be partly strong and partly broken. And whereas thou saw iron mixed with um let's keep going down to um, forty four, and in the days of the king shall the shall the God of heaven set up his a kingdom which shall never be destroyed and the kingdom shall not be left to other people but it shall break into pieces and consume all the kingdoms and shall stand forever for as much thou sawest that the stone was cut out of the mountain without hands and that it break in pieces the iron the brass the clay the silver and the gold the great God hath made known to the king what shall come to pass hereafter and the dream is certain and the interpretation sure of so God is going to destroy this kingdom, this um, Babylonian uh, edifice, this idolatry of man, the idolatry of man, man setting up himself and worshiping himself. He was going to break down this great idol of Babylon, chaos. That's what Babylon means. It means chaos. He's going to break down man's chaos and his self-worship and idolatry with a stone that's not cut from is not hewn by man an un, a, a stone from from heaven basically a stone that wasn't carved by man god is going to do something here he is going to bring down man's idolatry of himself with this what a stone we look at what happened in john 10 they try to stone him we see in the book of Revelation, the church of Philadelphia is removed from the hour of tribulation, which shall come upon, come upon the whole earth. These synagogue of Satan who are blasphemers and liars. What happens? They are stoned. They will be stoned. This is God's wrath upon them. 
for all and all the prayers that are released in the temple at the dedication when when the church is removed from the hour of tribulation they are taken to the the temple and the prayers are released now um also just to to emphasize this point one more time um what was the first who was the first christian martyr well that would have been stephen what happened to Stephen? Stephen was a righteous man, an incredibly righteous man. It talks about Stephen in words that were um, very, very glowing. Stephen is a great man. He was he was a shepherd over the sheep. He was when the church was established and first came, uh, it started to grow in Jerusalem. They, there was a problem because the, the church was trying to administer to all the needs as well as preach the gospel and take care of all the other um, administrative things that needed to be done. Um, but the apostles were saying, well, there's too much work for us to do. We need to appoint, you know, deacons and, and, and people who were going to look after the sheep. And so they appointed these um, men, seven men of high honor, seven, isn't that interesting? Seven other, there it is again, administration, seven as a number of government, administration, the bride, the church, the seven spirits, it's the number of perfection. It's an incredible number. Wherefore, the brethren, this is Acts 6, 3. Wherefore, brethren, look out for among you seven men of honest report, full of the Holy Ghost and wisdom. There it is, that wisdom again. Wisdom, the pomegranates around the temple. The temple. Full of the Holy Ghost and wisdom, whom you may appoint over this business. And we will give ourselves continually to prayer and to the ministry of the word. And so they appointed um, uh, this group of pe people, Philip, Pro Procorus, Nicar Nicanor, Timon, Paraneus, and um, uh, Nicholas, uh, the proselyte of Antioch, uh, and they chose Stephen. Okay, so Stephen was one of the seven. And Stephen, Stephen is the first. He was a very godly, good man. It says so. And he was seized. Um, Acts 6, 8, and Stephen, Stephen, full of faith and power, did great wonders and miracles among the people. And there arose again of the synagogue, which synagogue? The synagogue of Satan, people, which is called the synagogue of, listen to this, libertines. <laughs> the synagogue of libertines, the synagogue of Satan, this is what they were uh, in spirit. This, they were called, which is called the synagogue of Libertines and Cyrenians and Alexandrians and of them of Cilicia and Asia disputing with Stephen. Um, and they were not able to resist the wisdom and the spirit by which he spake. Then they suborned men, which said, we have heard him speak blasphemous words against Moses and against God. And they stirred up the people and the elders and the scribes. These people are stirring up trouble. They're the ones stirring up trouble. The people weren't having problems with the church until these people, the synagogue of, of Satan, were stirring up trouble among the people and telling lies and blasphemies about these good people. Um, and they stirred up the people and the elders and the scribes and came upon him and caught him and brought him to the council. And they set up false witnesses, which said, This man ceases not to speak blasphemous words against the holy place and the law. What's happening today? We're seeing all the synagogue of Satan speaking blasphemous lies against good people. Just Judge Kavanaugh, just right, right now, we just saw that happen. And they were trying to stone him in a spiritual sense. They were trying to stone this man and destroy him. It's the same thing. The same thing, they're just trying to destroy good people. The president of the United States, good Christian people are all being told lies and blasphemies about. And it happened here. This is, this is what the synagogue of Satan does. They stir up the people with lies and blasphemies. And it says, we have heard him that says, Jesus of Nazareth, Nazareth shall destroy this place and shall change the customs which Moses delivered us. And they all sat in council, looking steadfastly on him, saw his face as it had been the, as it had been the face of an angel. His countenance was so beautiful. Stephen's face was so beautiful. It looked like an angel to them in their darkened minds. This is how they saw Stephen. And it didn't stop them though. For Acts uh, 7, they stoned Stephen. He gets an incredible, an incredible history of, of God through Moses and the law and how Jesus Christ came to fulfill all of it. And they were pricked to the hearts. It actually pricked them to the hearts. Now, this is interesting. Listen to what he says about them. He gives us an incredible, uh, all Acts 7, he gives this incredible um, um, testimony 
Now it gets down to the bottom. It says, um, talks about Solomon built this house. They're talking about the tabernacle or the the uh, the, tab, the temple that Solomon had built. Um, and it talks about how he, so it goes on. It's just incredible. This is the practically last thing it talks about is God's temple, which Solomon built. Um, this is Acts 7.48. How be it the most high dwelt not in temples made with hands, as saith the prophet. Well, we are in this temple. We are the temple which in which God dwells. Heaven is my throne and earth is my footstool. And what house will you build me, says the Lord? Or what is the place of my rest? Hath not my hand made all these things? You stiff-necked and uncircumcised in the heart and ears, you do you do you do always resist the Holy Ghost as your fathers did, and so do ye. Who are they resisting? They're resisting the Holy Ghost. The enmity for the woman. I like I said before, and if you haven't heard this before, I'm gonna say it again anyway. The Holy Ghost is the perfect feminine. The Holy Ghost is the feminine entity of God. We are all created in the image of God, male and female. The Holy Ghost is the feminine entity. Of God, the administrator, the governor, the government of of God's kingdom, the Holy Ghost, which is the perfect feminine, which is described in, in in the book of Proverbs. You will find about the Holy Spirit in the book of Proverbs. She is described as um, being more precious. She's described as wisdom. She's described as more precious as than rubies. It's talking about how how do you find a perfect wife? She's more precious than rubies. That is where you find out about the Holy Spirit. She is the, the voice of wisdom. They resist the Holy Spirit. They have enmity for the woman. They have enmity for that feminine spirit, the voice of wisdom. And this is what it says here. You stiff neck and uncircumcised in heart and ears, do you also resist? You do always resist the Holy Ghost as your fathers did. So do ye. Which of the prophets have you not, have not the fathers persecuted? And they slain them that slew be, that shewed before uh, the coming of the just one of whom you have not been now the betrayers and murderers. So he called this the synagogue of Satan betrayers and murderers who you have received by uh, received the law by the disposition of this position, this position of angels and you have not kept it. And it says here, this is what I stone him. And when they heard these things, they were cut to the heart and they gnashed him uh, they, they gnashed on him with their teeth. They were cut to the heart and they gnashed at him with their teeth. <sighs> this is what they were doing. What happens to those who are not filled with the oil of the Holy Spirit? The oil represents the Holy Spirit. When Jesus comes back for his church, the door will be shut and they will be left behind where there is weeping and gnashing of teeth. This is what those people are doing. And what do they do to Stephen? They stone him. But he was being full of the Holy Ghost, looked up steadfastly into heaven and saw the glory of God. He saw an open door. Stephen saw an open door. And Jesus standing on the right hand of God and said, Behold, I see the heavens opened. And the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God. And they cried out with a loud voice and stopped their ears. They went, <laughs> they couldn't stand it. And they ran at him with one accord and cast him out of the city and stoned him. And the witnesses laid down their clothes, uh, and the witnesses laid down their clothes at the young man's feet, whose name was Saul, who had later become Paul, the greatest apostle to the Gentiles. But this was the first Christian martyr, and what happened to him? He was stoned. You think that this is not a, a righteous judgment on God's part when he pours down the wrath of God on the heads of the synagogue of Satan for what they did and what they've been doing? Stoning innocent people and stirring up the people with lies and blasphemy? This is a righteous judgment, people. He will stone them. He will, Stones that are not cut with man's hands. This, is, will, be, this will bring down their idolatry of themselves, their, their lies and their blasphemies against God and the people of God. We will escape from this hands, the hands of those who wanted to stone and take our innocent blood. Our innocent blood. Those who are in the grasp of, of, of God and they cannot be taken from. No man can close the door of salvation on the church of Philadelphia. There is no, we listen to Christ. We listen to him and God will take his revenge 
Well, on the synagogue of Satan, and the wrath of God will pour down upon their heads with the very same thing that they did to this righteous man here, and what they tried to do to Jesus, and what they've been trying to do to us. We will be removed from the hour of tribulation which shall come upon all, upon all the world. What is that trial? It is the stones coming from the heavens, falling on earth and burning up a third of the part of the earth and, and destroying a third part of the oceans. That's what's going to happen. Will the world recover from it? Yes, it has to. It has to because all of Bible prophecy has to be fulfilled. But there's going to be an hour, a moment. It's not going to be a very long time, but it'll be long enough to, to do incredible damage and bring down this cabal. And they will come and worship at our feet. That's what the Bible says in church at the Church of Philadelphia. And I'm thinking, wow, this, this is huge. And like I said, going back to John chapter 10, this is what it says here. Basically, I believe this is what he's saying. This analogy that's going on here in John 10 and him, Jesus walking in the porch of Solomon on the day of dedication, which is Hanukkah. And the, the porch of Solomon is filled with pillars. It's about the dedication of the temple and the cleansing of the temple. We just, like I said, have the, the sign of the red heifer. They, the Israel has declared that there's a red heifer that's been born in Israel. What's the red heifer for? She's for the cleansing of the temple. She's not sacrificed in the temple. She's sacrificed outside the temple and her ashes are spread to sanctify and cleanse the temple. It's the bride who goes into the temple to cleanse it because we have been purified in our temples from the lies and the deceptions of Satan. And we are filled with the Holy Spirit. We are filled with wisdom. We obey Christ. We only hear his voice. And we are being deemed worthy to be worshipped by the synagogue of Satan. We are now equally yoked with Christ. It, it, this, and this is like um, huge to me. So if I think that there's, getting back to it, just to finish and conclude this, I believe that there's a very strong possibility that we've been looking at the wrong date <clears throat> for the rapture. Everyone's saying the rapture happens on um the Feast of Trumpets or this, that, and well, obviously it hasn't happened yet. But I think if anything, if there's any indication that we are, that the rapture will occur, would be on the Feast of uh, of Hanukkah, which seems to line, line up much more to the Church of Philadelphia, which I've shown you, it matches. There's there's a core, definite correlation that you cannot, you cannot dispute as being um, there, <laughs> it's there, and and like I said, this this whole thing that they picked up stones to stone Jesus, and they didn't have the legal right to do it. They don't have the legal right to stone us either, and we don't. God um, legally, God is going to has the right to remove us because we've been sanctified. That's what it says in John. We have been sanctified, and no man can pluck us from His hands. We've been sanctified by the blood of Christ Jesus. And then Jesus, after he leaves, he goes back to the place where he was baptized. I think this is a sign, another sign. Get baptized, people. Those who tell you don't do it, well, that's just the synagogue of Satan. Or those that are just man, man telling you to worship man and not listen to Jesus. Jesus' words. Jesus said, he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. Jesus' words. Not man. Jesus Christ, the Son of God, who says he and his Father are one. You want to be one with Christ? It talks about in Romans 6. When you're baptized into his death, burial, and resurrection, you become one with him. With his death, his burial, and his resurrection. And guess what? His rapture too. Jesus was taken up and raptured into the heavens. We will do the same. Because we are one. We are like him. We will be like him. We will see him as he is and he will take us up. Those who say there is no rapture, they're wrong, they're lying, they don't know, they're misdeceived, they they misunderstood, they have misinterpreted the, the scriptures, they're not seeing it clearly. I'm trying to give you the picture, a big picture, the whole picture, trying to put the pieces in for you so you can figure it out for yourself. Go back and look at these scriptures and match them up. Go back to my last few videos, particularly my last few videos, and you will see what I'm talking about in this video is even made in more detail. There's more detail there. This is huge. This is huge. And then it talks about how after the church is raptured, there's a, a period of half an hour. There's, 
I, I, I believe the church will be raptured. There will be this moment of the people will be absolutely stunned. I believe the world will go into shock. And God gives them a moment to get over their shock. And then comes the wrath, which is the stones that fall from heaven and burns up a third of the part of the earth, which is Revelation chapter 8. So the things that they have planned for us, God is going to allow it to fall on their heads because of their lies and blasphemies. Anyway, I think that's all I need to say on this video. If you have not given your life to Jesus Christ, please do so before it's too late. I don't know whether the rapture of the church is this year. I don't know when the rapture is. I'm just making my speculation, but I'm just saying there's a very strong case, a very strong case that Hanukkah is the festival of the uh, the feast of the rapture. I believe that this is what it's saying, that this is where it's leading to us. We can come to some strong conclusions. No man knows day or the hour. We don't. But and every it seems like every feast seems to have some good legitimate reason for that being the, uh, the a possible date. And they're they're all possibilities. But to me that this has a stronger possibility than all the others because of its correlation to the Church of Philadelphia, Jesus being in the Solomon's temple on that day, the things that happened in John chapter ten that correspond directly to the Church of Philadelphia. And how it says, he says he will remove us from that hour of tribulation, which is the stoning of the earth for their lies and blasphemy. And how he's going to bring down in, jo in, jo in Daniel, the book of Daniel, the, the dream of Nebuchadnezzar, <clears throat> the spirit of Babylon will be removed and man's idolatry of man. That statue is going down and it's going down without man's help. It's to be the wrath of God falling on them. <clears throat> so it's not too late to believe Jesus and do what he tells you to do in the church, church of Philadelphia. Let's just go there really quickly before I finish. Church of Philadelphia, what does he say? I know they works. I have set before thee an open door, and no man can shut it. <clears throat> For thou hast little strength and hast kept my word, and hast not denied my name. <clears throat> Mark. 16, 16, Jesus' word, um, Mark, Mark 16, 15, and he said unto them, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be damned. <clears throat> Acts 2, 38. Holy Spirit has fallen on Peter and he's given his first solo sermon. <clears throat> he says to them, they're pricked at their hearts and says, Peter said unto them, Acts 2.38, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Repent. Repentance has to do with the mind. It means changing your mind. It means cleansing your temple. Cleanse your temple, change your mind, believe Jesus and do what he tells you to do. Follow Jesus, not follow man. Don't listen to the idolatry in the, the synagogue of Satan who have put themselves above Jesus. They're going down, people. They're going down. That idol is going down. Anyway, that's all I need to say for now. God bless and have a good day.